Hey everybody, it's Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, out here in Northern California. How are you? I hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Today we're going to be working with a really fun tangle. This tangle was inspired by a challenge that uh, Hani Nura is doing on her Full Moon Mosaic page. I'm such a big fan of hers. I just love her style and I love the challenges that she comes up with, especially when she does them with color because then I really can go for it and have a good time. So today's class is inspired by the current one that's happening and they are done on the Maryland tile and the Maryland tile is here at tangledyogi.com and I love these. I have the sugar and the brown sugar Marylands and I love these tiles because they're super smooth. They take color really really well and they're just a lot of fun to work on and they're a great size to work on as well. So I hope you'll go over to tangledyogi.com and check out our Maryland tile and support me and my goal of being as untangled teacher as my profession. Okay, so there's the tiles that we're going to be working on. Things that you're going to need for class are you're going to need a micron pen. Uh, you want to use the PN by the way, or you can use an 01 if that feels good to you. Uh, you're going to need to have a pencil with no eraser because there are no mistakes in Zen Tangle. And then finally, you will have a Uniball uh, Signo white pen. I'm a huge fan of this. You know it if you've been taking my classes for a while. And then if uh, you don't uh, have one, go ahead and grab your white color pencil out of your color pencil box. This one is um, made by Prisma. I am not using a charcoal pencil for this. I'm using just a regular color pencil. I love it for blending and it just makes the creamiest colors. It's really nice. Okay, so with that said, let's talk about the tangles that we're going to be using today. So in the challenge is a really great tangle, and this is called Ani. Um, I think it's A-N-N-E-E, -E. great tangle, really fun. And if you've been taking my classes for a while, you might remember this tangle from a little while back. I did a class called Easy Celtic Knot, and we used this as our primary part of the tangle here. And then there's a tangle that I was not familiar with, which I really have fallen in love with. This is called Wand W or Wand W. I'm not really sure how they're pronouncing it, but I'm loving the tangle and find it very addictive. I've been playing around with it and kind of doing a different variation on it, and it's been a lot of fun. So those are the tangles that we're going to be focusing on today. And then, of course, maybe a little bit of Bale's flower in there and so on. Uh, let's talk about one more thing before we go to meditation, and that is the... Um, the way of making circles. Some of you have seen me make circles in the past with, you know, uh, mugs and um, quarters and all sorts of things. But I've really fallen in love with this circle maker and it's made by Picket and it's called the Circle Master. And I have to say, this has been such a great thing because I can throw it in my uh, color pencil bag and I have it wherever I go and it just makes circle making that much easier. So today we're gonna be using this when we create the template for the class. So if you have a circle maker, go and grab it. If you have a compass, you can grab that. Or if you don't have any of those things, go and grab some cups that are different sizes and we'll figure it out. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so let's take a moment to get centered and get ready to create here. For those of you who've never taken class with me before, I always like to do just a quick little meditation to get my hands to settle and my body to relax into the space so that I can create in a much more um, succinct way. So go ahead and sit back into your chair and allow the back of your body to rest against the back of the chair here. Allow your feet to make connection with the floor and allow your eyes to close for a moment. You can take your hands and place your hands in your lap, palms facing up. And just take a moment to notice the sounds around you. I'm not rejecting any of those sounds, just letting them wash right over you. Allowing whatever is there to be there. And then beginning to soften in your body here, relaxing through your facial features, 
softening through the eyebrows and the forehead, the cheeks and the jaw. Let your tongue be at rest in the back of your mouth. Allow your shoulders to melt away from your ears. Feeling your biceps and your lower arms relax. Letting go through the wrists and the hands. Softening through the chest and the belly. Letting go through the hips and the thighs, the knees and the calves, the ankles and the feet. Feeling the entire body be at ease right here and right now. And then letting your awareness turn to your breath. Feeling the breath as it flows in and feeling the breath as it flows out. Breathing into the nose and out through the nose. In through the nose and out through the nose. And let's begin to shape the breath here. Breathing into the count of four and exhaling to the count of six. Breathing in to the count of four, and exhaling to the count of six. Two more of these. Exhaling. Last one. And releasing. Letting your breath go back to its natural pace. And notice if it's just a little bit more spacious and more ease filled. When you feel ready now, beginning to wiggle in your fingertips and wiggle in your toes. Gently blink your eyes open, adding vision back into your practice. And let's get ready to tangle. Okay, so let's get ourselves started here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these guys off to the side and I am going to bring in one of the Maryland tiles. So I'm working with the brown sugar Maryland and I'm just gonna bring it right here in the centerpiece here and I'm gonna make this nice and big so that you can see what I am up to. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our, our little pencil without an eraser here and all we're gonna do is we're gonna work from the top to the bottom and I'm just gonna divide the space. So we're making our string and you can see I'm not using a ruler and I just very lightly made a line going all the way from the top of the diamond to the bottom of the diamond. I'm gonna turn my tile here and I'm gonna go ahead and cross through the center. So you now can see that it kind of looks like a kite, right? So now I'm gonna take my handy dandy circle maker here and I'm going to start with the smallest circle first and I'm going to place that circle right in the center here and it looks like this is a one and a quarter circle uh, and so I'm just going to go in and I'm going to create that first circle so one and a quarter inch circle here in your circumference there and then I'm going to switch over to another circle and I think I'm going to go a little bit bigger on this one. This is two and a half inches and I'm just going to line it up the best way that I can here. Once I've got it aligned 
as best as I can. I'm going to go ahead and make that circle. So two and a half inches for that one. And then finally, I'm going to go with the largest circle that I have. And this is a three inch circle here that I have. And I want to make sure that it's all lined up and ready to rock and roll. So once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and fill that in as well. And that's going to be part of our little Zen button uh, thing that glows in the center. So um, you can see that that's this area right here, which is so fun. So that's it. Really, really easy. Uh, if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to do it. But otherwise, it should look a little something like this. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start to divide the space just a little bit more here and create our string. So we've got our circles. Now we're going to divide it up a little bit more. You can see that I'm inside the circle and I'm just going to divide these large pizza square or pizza slices just one more time. And you can see that I'm not going outside of the inside circle. So I'm not I'm not going out of this part of the circle here. So you can see that I've divided it up so that you, I believe you'll have six. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, eight. So it's eight, sorry about that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to divide the space up near the top. So you can see that I've got the line up in here and I'm gonna go ahead and do two dots, one dot on each side of this line. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very gently create almost like a very light diagonal so that we have this really nice shape in which to work in later on. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little aura on each side, just like so. I'm going to flip my tile and I'm going to do the exact same thing. So here's my line. I'm going to come out about a quarter of an inch on each side here. I'm going to go ahead and make my lines and then I'm going to aura my lines. This one feels a little bit wider. That's okay. You know me. We just go with the flow here. All right, so once you have that, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make one more set of lines and that line is gonna line up with our diagonals here. So we're gonna go one and two right there and then we'll go one and two right here. So all the while we're leaving this part alone. I'm gonna flip my tile and I'm gonna do the same exact thing right here. So I'm just gonna come in, I'm gonna line up with the diagonal. Now this side looks like it might be slightly off so I might come down a little bit and I'm just gonna go one and two and then I'm gonna go over here and do the same, one and two. That way we have this kind of nice energy that's radiating out from the center here which I think is really nice. So. All in all, your tiles should look a little something like this. If you need to pause me, this is a great place to do it. Otherwise, we're gonna just get started. Okay, so you can see that we are ready to rock and roll. I've got my tile all set up and we're gonna start in the center first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come right to this line right here and I'm gonna start by making two dots right here and we're going to make a bales flower. This is what I like to call a bales flower. So we're going to use the same technique that you would for bales. So we're just going to make a nice bay leaf right here or a seed like shape and then I'm going to make another dot right down here and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm just going to come down and connect and make a little chain. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my tile now so that it's vertical and I'm just gonna do the exact same thing. So here's my dot right at the top. You can see I'm on that line and I'm just gonna go ahead and create my bales flower. I'm gonna go ahead and make a dot at the bottom because I know that that's where I'm going to land. And there is your bales flower. We're gonna to start to build out of the bales flower here and I'm just gonna turn this so that you can see that my petals are up towards the top and towards the bottom here. I'm going to come up the line just a little bit, about a quarter of an inch, and make a little dot. And I'm just going to create a small bale leaf that's coming right in towards the center. I'm going to do the same thing as I turn my tile, coming out a quarter of an inch and making my bales leaf nice and small. Coming in again, making my dot about a quarter of an inch, make my little bale leaf. 
And we're gonna do it one more time, coming up about a quarter of an inch. And there you have it. Really pretty and sweet, delicate little flower. Now we're going to aura that little leaf. So if you need to pause me, this is a great place to do it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep on rolling. You can see that I have my line here and this is gonna be my guide. I'm just gonna come straight up from where it is. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make actually a dot right up here. And I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna connect just like so. I'm gonna turn my tile and I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. So I'm right on the edge of that circle and then I'm gonna to come to either side right here and just connect turning my tile, make a dot right on the edge, one on each petal here, and then I'm going to go ahead and connect. One more time, out to the edge on each petal, and then going ahead and connecting them. So that now we have a really nice interesting centerpiece here. Once you have your centerpiece, you can go ahead and you can add a little bit more to it. You can see I've got these interesting little triangular shapes here. Some of them are more triangular than others. It's no big deal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come in and aura each shape and get another little triangular shape out of it. You can see as I'm turning here that I'm getting that really nice little triangular shape. And I just think it makes such a neat little tribal pattern. It felt very tribal to me when I was teaching this to my group in Riley Street Art Supply in San Rafael. So there you have it. So that when you come back around, it really has a nice energy to it. Really fun little flower. Not perfect, doesn't have to be. That's what Zentangle's all about. Just enjoying the flow. So. Go ahead, finish up your center, and I will see you in a minute. Okay, so this is where things are going to get fun and interesting. So we're going to start with Ani, and I love this tangle. It is so much fun. So you can see that I'm on this line right here, and I'm right in the middle between the inside circle and the outside circle. And I'm just going to make a dot, and I'm going to make it a fairly substantial dot. So don't make your dots too, too small. You want to have a nice size dot there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my tile and go to the next line and put it right smack dab in the middle. That nice spot here. I'm going to go ahead and turn again. Do the same thing. So I'm just turning my tile and making it happen. Here we go. Going all the way around. Remember, nice substantial dots here. We really want them to be visible. And voila, we are almost there. Nice good dot right there. And they're all in the middle of the line here. So you can go back and see if there's any spaces that you need to clean up. And then once you've done that, we're gonna go ahead and start to build. So if you need to pause me here, go ahead and pause me. Otherwise, we're just gonna keep on rolling. So you can see that all these dots right here, they look like little planets orbiting the sun, yeah? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this dot first, right up at the top. And I'm gonna come right off of the top here. You can see, I'm gonna make this nice and big so everybody can see what I'm up to. So I'm gonna make this kind of like it's gonna float right off the top here. I'm gonna round off and I'm just gonna curve over and in to the line that is just below the next dot. So you can see it has a little bit of a rounded edge to it, yeah? I'm gonna turn my tile clockwise and I'm gonna do it again. So I'm coming off the top and going to the next line, right under that dot, turning my tile, going off the dot to the next dots line right there. We're right on top of that circle. Turning my tile, coming off the top, and landing. Turning, coming off the top, land right at that next one. Turning my tile, coming off the top, landing right at the next one. Turning my tile, 
coming off the top and landing. Last one right here. Here we go. And landing. So go ahead, finish that part, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We're going to make this a little bit bigger so that you can really see what I'm up to here. So I'm going to start right here on this particular string. Notice that I'm coming down about halfway and I'm just going to take it and connect. All I did was take a little dot right here and connect it right over here. Let's do it again together. I'm going to turn my tile. I'm going to come in right here about halfway down. I'm going to make a little dot and I'm going to connect it to the next line. See how that has a really nice flow to it? It's got a really nice energy. So we're going to turn it come down about halfway, make a dot, and connect. Going and doing the next one, coming down halfway, make your dot, and connect. Turning, coming down halfway, make your dot, and connect. See how those lines are lining right up? Turning my tile, coming down halfway, and connect. One more right here, Make your dot and connect. So now it really does look like a little sun, doesn't it? It's so cheerful. I really do like this tangle a lot. It's a lot of fun for me. So we're going to start to build off of this tangle. If you need to pause me, this is a great place to do it to catch up. Remember, take a deep breath. Relax. We're here to have fun. Okay, so we're just going to keep on rolling here. And what I want you to think about for this next part is that we're auraing this line right here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little dot right here at the top. You can see that I've got a little, a little dot right above this one. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take that dot. It's right on the vertical line. You can see where it is, right? I'm going to take that dot. I'm going to aura the line that's below it. And then watch, I'm going to connect right in the bottom half of this little dot. See how that happened? We came from the top, came all the way down, and then we connected to the bottom half of the dot that was right after it. Let's do it again. I'm turning my tile clockwise here. Here we go. Here's my next dot. I'm coming up to the top of it, making a dot. I know that I'm going to aura this line right here, coming down, and dropping in right underneath that dot right there. Really, really cool. Turning the tile, coming to the next dot. So we're right here, right above it, and coming down, aura the line, and connect. Turning the tile, coming right to the next one right here. Make your dot right on the edge of the circle, and connect right in the bottom half of that one turning your tile. Here it is right here. Go right above it. Make your dot. Coming down and connect. Going around to the next one. Make your dot right on the top or that line and connect. Last one right here. You have almost made it all the way around. Here's your dot and connect. Oops, I think I lied. I think we have one more to go. Nope, I think we did just right. Nope, we've got one more. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's our last dot right here. And then we're going to go in and we're going to connect. So now your piece should look a little something like this. If you need to catch up to me, this is a great place to do it. Pause me and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We're going to do the final stretch right here in Ani. So I'm just going to come from the top here and I'm going to round off. So I'm just going to go ahead and round this right off here. And then I'm going to go to the next one and do the same. So all I'm doing is just rounding off. Remember, these do not need to connect. They're just fine being on their own. So I'm just turning and I'm rounding off just making it have a really nice soft braided feeling going all the way around and just rounding off really nice and soft 
Turning your tile all the while. This is the easiest part, I think, of the whole thing. And there you have it. We have completed our Ani flower. And I just think that is just such a cool tangle. I love this tangle. So go ahead, round off all of your Ani flower here, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now we have the piece right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start to work in the area surrounding the Ani flower. And I'm just going to bring this up a little bit here. So you can see that I'm working on the inside channel here. I'm not on this outside channel. I'm still on the inside. And we have yet again these interesting little triangular pieces that have showed up. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to aura those triangular pieces, and that's going to give an aura to the Ani flower, which is so cool. So I'm just going to go in and aura those triangular pieces, and you can see I'm just going from place to place. If it's easier for you to turn your tile, go ahead and turn your tile. Otherwise, all I'm doing is just auraing the lines here. Coming around. And voila, you can see I've had a chance to go all the way through. I think it just makes it so interesting and uh, gives it a vibrational quality that I really like. So we're going to carry on here and we're going to start to work now in the outside of the circle here. So I'm going to turn my triangle or my diamond tile here, my Marilyn, and you can see now that I'm working up at the top and we're going to start to do the Wan W or Wan Wu, however you want to pronounce it. And I'm coming into the two lines that I made up at the top and I'm just going to go ahead and ink them in just like so so that we know exactly where we're working. So this tangle is really fun and it reminds me a lot of Shattuck actually. So I'm just gonna come in and I want you to think about this as you're making a little heart at the bottom of your piece here. So you can see I'm coming up and I'm just making this heart-like shape. And basically what it's doing is it's helping me to divide the space. I'm still using this vertical line to help me uh, bring the tangle all the way up. Now for this version of Wan Wu, what I did was I created little diamonds. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and make a triangle and then I'm going to aura it. Okay, so you can see that I have the two pieces and then I've got the diamond that's been aurated here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an arc going over that. So I'm just going to make two little dots on either side of the circles here. You can see I've got that going and now I'm going to come up and over and I'm going to arc just like so. Now once I've done that, I'm going to jump off the side here. So you can see I'm just going to carry that scalloping off to the side and I'm going to do the same thing over here. Once I've done that, now I can go ahead and I can do the diamond again. So one here and one here, one here and one here. Now I'm going to come from the center and create those little arcs. One and two. Then I'll come up from the center, create the diamond, and aura the diamond. And now you can see that I can just round right off and make it look like that's the last one. Now you can see I've got a couple that are empty down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill them with diamonds. I'll come in right here and do the same thing over here. And then over here where these guys are kind of jumping off to the side, I want to give it some kind of a feeling. So I'll make it look as though it's just falling off the side here. And that is the Wan Wu. I love this little tangle. It is so much fun. So there it is. We're going to flip the tile and we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side. So here we are. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in right here and ink in my lines. And we'll do the Wan Wu again. So we're right here on the vertical line. We're going to come up and make a heart, or at least the top of one anyway. And after Valentangle, this should be pretty easy for everybody. Boy, did we have fun in Valentangle this year. Woo woo, Marguerite, that was so much fun. 
So there it is. We've got the beginning of Wand Wu or Wand W. And then once again, I'm going to put my little dots here and I'm going to go ahead and arc. And then I'm going to come up and out and arc off the sides. And then I'll go ahead again and I'll start to create those diamonds one and two. One and two. And then once again, I'm going to go ahead and build off. So we'll go ahead and we'll arc out. And then I'll do my final diamond in the center. And then I'll arc off at the top. I'm going to go after these guys now. So I'll go in and I'll put it in. And put one in over here. And put one in over here. And there you have it. So go ahead, finish up yours, and I'll see you in a minute. Remember, relax your shoulders, take in a deep breath, let it go, and let her rip. Have a good time. Okay, so you can see that the tile is really coming along. This is a lot of fun here. I'm just going to turn the tile on its side here, and I'm going to start to work in these spaces. So you can see that I'm going to go in and I'm going to ink in these two lines over here and these two lines over here. Once I've done that, I'm going to come up right into where the diamond is. And I'm going to create a really nice effect by having some triangular motion coming off the top. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to make three dots. You can see that they're going to line up with each other. And this is about an inch apart right here. Let's blow this up and make it really clear for everybody to see. So really right on the edge here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to connect my dots and create a triangle. Then I'm going to come in and aura that triangle once, and then another time. And then I'll go ahead and I'll flip my tile, and I'll do it again. So I'm going to come in right here, make my triangle, go ahead and create. One more right there. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do it in the next pocket spaces here. So I've got one and two right here and one and two right over here. So I'm just going to come in from this space right up from the center, make a dot, and then I'll go ahead and I'll make my two dots here and I'll just connect. And these will be a range of sizes here. And you can see that I've kind of gotten myself into a little pickle. So I might just go off the side and create a little bit larger of a piece here. And then I'll come over to the next side and I'll line it up. So lining it up from the center here, making my dots on either side and connect. And then go ahead and connect again. And then I'll go to the next one. So I've got these guys right over here, one and two. I'm going to come up from the center here, make my dot, coming over, and triangle, and triangle, and one more right in here, up from the center, coming out and down, out and down, out and down. And voila, here we are. Nice energy coming off the center here. Really fun tile. We're going to have a lot of fun with this. Go ahead, catch up to me. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to do my favorite part. We're going to do some puddling here. And I've got my, my PN. I love the PNs for puddling. I think they're great. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into this center piece right in here. And you can see that I've got these little baby triangles right in here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to puddle in those little baby triangles here. So you can see that I'm just going around. Remember, the lighter your pen touches the page, the more the ink flows. So remember, if you're pushing hard on that pen, see if you can back off just a little bit. So we're going to go all the way around here and just puddle in. And you can see that that really does start to give the piece a little bit of gravity. 
I really love adding black to um, pieces. It really does help. Now I'm going to come out here into these triangles in the outer circle here. So I'm going to just come right in and get in and do those triangles as well. So you can see I'm just going around. I'll do half of them with you and then I'm going to ask you to do the other half on your own so that we save time on the video. So you can see that I'm just coming in and working with those pieces. So now you've seen me do half, you're going to do the other half on your own. So go ahead and do these guys right here. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to start to add a little bit more puddling to the piece here. We're going to start to puddle inside of the Wan W or the Wan Wu, whatever you want to call it. And so I'm going to come in and I'm going to come into the aura and just blacken the aura. You can see that I'm just going in there, adding a little bit of that black in there, going nice and light, and just making that really start to pop. It gives it such an interesting feel. <laughs> my dog Mojo is nuzzling my arm, so my arm keeps moving. <laughs> I'm just going to come in and finish that up. So we're going to go all the way up and do just those. I'll see you in a minute. So you can see that I've had a chance to do both sides, which is turning out quite nicely. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start to work with these triangles here. So I'm just going to come into the very bottom and go ahead and puddle in just at the bottom triangle, just like so. I'll go ahead and I'll do this guy down in here, down in here. And then over here. And you can see what that does is it just anchors the piece in such a way that is so interesting. So go ahead, fill those in and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so now it's my favorite time. It's color time party people. Woohoo! We're going to do some color. So what we're going to need is to think about the color that is actually going to be in our outer circle right here. I really love making this kind of glowy feeling in the uh, in the center of the piece here. I think it just holds the whole composition together. So I have chosen to use two different colors. I've got a lavender and I've got a dark purple here. Now, something to think about, for those of you who have not done my classes before, your color pencil is three different colors. You have your light, you have your medium, and you have your dark. Now, I'm working with a color that doesn't have a whole lot of pigment to it. So when you're dealing with a color that doesn't have a whole lot of pigment, you'll want to add a darker color to give it a little bit of shading so that you can get some of that richness from it. So. I have a really nice uh, pencil in my hand. This is called Dahlia Purple. It's one of my favorite purples and it's from Prisma. And then I think this one's lavender. Let's take a look. It is. So I'm going to use these two together. Okay, so what I've got is my lavender in my hand here and I'm going to go ahead and start to shade nice and lightly into the circle here. And I'm just going to do this on half of the circle so that we uh, get the idea across. So you can see that I'm just going ahead and I'm very, very lightly shading in through the whole piece here and getting that nice shadow going across with the color. I'm just doing half here so that you can really see what I'm up to. So you can see I'm not being overly cautious and you can see how lovely this paper is. It just takes that color so nicely. It's just very rich and luscious. I just love that. So you can see that I've done half of the circle here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab mount my white pencil and I'm gonna turn this on its side here so you can really see what I'm up to. And I'm gonna take that white pencil and I'm just gonna go ahead and bring some of that white right down the center of the 
circle here. You can see that that's creating this really nice little sheen. And you can see I'm also not being overly careful with my lines. I don't want my lines to be perfect because whenever you see a shine coming off of something, it's generally not perfect either. So you can see that I've got that whole thing coming in, but you can see also that I have the lavender around it. We don't wanna lose that. Now I've got my purple pencil here and you can see that my purple pencil needs a little bit of sharpening. So I'm gonna pause here, do a quick sharpen, and then we're gonna come right back to it. Okay, so I've had a chance to sharpen the pencil. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in now with my sharp pencil. Yay, we like a good sharp pencil for this. And I'm gonna start to bring in that darker color right on that inner edge. Now you'll notice that my pencil is working in a somewhat circular motion. I'm not trying to get a really hard line. I'm just trying to get the idea of a little bit of depth in the color. I'm not trying to go you know, back and forth. I'm just trying to get a nice kind of soft blurriness about it. So I'm just coming in and adding that in. And this is almost like what we do with um, when we're shading the Zen buttons, which I love to do those Zen buttons. They are so much fun. And then I'm gonna come around on the other side and I'm going to do the same thing. Remember that circular like motion that I was talking about with the pencil? So I'm just bringing it in and because this pencil has all the pigment that I need it to have, I don't have to press hard here. I can actually go pretty lightly and get everything that I need from it. So I'm just coming down and lightly shading it out getting that nice rich color on the outside. And you can see that that's really starting to get very neon in its presentation, which is so fun. I'm gonna come back up here and clean it up just a little bit. Now I can go and grab my lavender and I can blur it out a little bit. You can see that I'm just very, very lightly blurring out that darker purple, but not really crossing into the white. I'm dipping into it a little bit, but not overly so. So you can see that I've got you know a nice light purple and that nice rich luscious purple on the outside edge. So I'm just getting in there, softening it up, and then coming back around. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other side just the same way. You go ahead and do it as well, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around, and boy, oh boy, does that ever glow, doesn't it? So we're going to do a little bit more here, and what we're going to do is we're going to start to come into the areas around our Ani flower here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start to add a little bit of that lavender right in here, just around the outside of this flower. I'm sorry, not the Ani flower, but the Bales flower. Hello, McFly. <laughs> all right, so I'm going in and I'm going all the way around here and filling those in. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab that darker purple. And I'm gonna to start to use that darker purple right on the outside edges to give a shadow to the Bales flower that I have here. So you can see that I'm just very lightly adding a little bit of that darker tension. And then I'll go in and give it a nice heavy edge just right in on that line. And you can see what that does is it just gives it a little bit of drama. Now I'm going to grab my white pencil and I'm just going to come in here and add just a little bit of white right into this area right here and you can see that that starts to give it such a beautiful glow, doesn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go back around. I'm going to do this guy over here. You can see I'm going very lightly first with that darker pencil. And then I'm going to come back in with that darker color right along the edge. And then I'll grab that white and bring it in just to get that glow. So go ahead, do these two, and I'll see you in a minute. 
Okay, so I've had the chance to do that. Now I'm gonna carry that color one more time. You can see that I have these little triangular pieces right in here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to start to carry that right into those triangular pieces. Now you'll notice that I'm not going past where those little triangles are, I'm just staying on the outside edge. And I'm just going all the way around the piece just like so. And you can see that that's starting to add definition to areas where it was pretty darn busy. It's a very busy tangle, this tangle. And what I love about color is that it can take the most busy tangle and really give it some gravity, which I love. So we've gone all the way around. We have filled in those triangles. Now, just at the tip here, I'm going to come in and I'm going to add a little bit of that darkness right on the edge. And that's going to give this a really nice feeling of depth and pointedness at the same time. So you can see I'm just going all the way around, just like so. And then finally what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that white pencil and I'm going to blend it in and start to get that nice kind of soft, pastel-y kind of look that I'm going for. I'm coming in and getting that in there. And isn't that so pretty? It's really started to bring so much to the piece. So go ahead, do that part, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we're going to start to work with the Bales flower here. And I'm going to change my color. I'm going to work in this really nice blue. Can you tell I love this pencil? <laughs> I do. I love, I love when pencils get to the point where they can just fit in the palm of your hand. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to very lightly shade in my Bales flower here. So once I've got that, <clears throat> pardon me, once I've got that flower going, I'm going to come into the center and give it a little bit of depth. So I'm gonna come in from the center here and start to shade my way out. And you can see that I'm using about a medium tension to do it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit more intensity right at the tip here. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Medium tension coming out and a little, little bit more intensity right here. I'm gonna turn my tile to make it easy for my hands here. Medium tension coming out a little bit more intensity towards the tip and the same thing here. And then I'll grab my white pencil and start to work on the edges and start to blur in those lines just to get a really beautiful blending on the edges. And that really does pop. I love seeing those colors just bounce right off of each other. They're just really fun. So go ahead, do those, and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so we're going to start to work in the Ani flower here. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to be using a really nice orange for this part. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two different oranges. I've got a really kind of orange yellow and then a dark orange so I'm going to come in first with the orange and you can see that I'm just getting in there and lightly shading my knot in here you can see I'm just kind of going through and I'm not being overly cautious with it I'm just getting that color down and working with it so you're going to go all the way around and do the whole braid or the whole knot just like so. For the sake of saving time, I'm just going to do half so that you can see what I'm up to. Okay, so once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab that darker orange here. And let's make this nice and big so you can really see what I'm up to. So I'm going to come in here and you can see that there's this line right here. I'm going to use that as an area in which to shade. So now I've got that orange that I'm putting down and I'm really just lightly putting it in there. I don't have to do a whole heck of a lot to make it look like there's orange there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to press a little bit harder and give it a little bit of depth. Now this is a really great place to note, okay, that color didn't have enough 
for me to get the shading that I'm looking for. And this is what I'm usually talking about with you guys. When you feel like you have a good color to shade with and it just isn't working out for you, you can always go in and grab one that's even darker. So I'm actually gonna be working with three this time. So I've got my orange and I've got a red and I've got a yellow. I'm gonna take that red and see if I can't get just a little bit more power out of that pencil here. And there you have it. It's starting to give me exactly what I'm looking for, the punch that I'm looking for. So I'll just come back in with that orange and give it a little bit more uh, filling in. And then I'm going to come back with that yellow and just blend out the edge a little bit. So there's the first half of the shading. Here comes the second half. So I'm going to come in underneath now and you can see here's the line that's underneath. We did this line. Now we're coming over here and doing this one. I'm in with the orange, creating that shadow. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab that red and add that red right underneath and it's going to give me just a really beautiful shading in here. Really, really nice. Then I can go back, grab that yellow, and blend out the outer edge of that orange, and you can see that that softens it. So you're going to go all the way around, and you're going to shade on this side and on this side to give it the nice softness, the nice braidedness. Let's do another one together. I'm coming in with that orange right here. You can see there's my line. So I'm coming in shading with my orange here. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab that red to give me just a little bit of power here. Then I'll go ahead and grab that yellow just to soften up the outside edge. And now I'm going to go over here. So I'm looking for this line right here. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that in get that nice orange going. Then I'm going to grab the red and fill that in. Notice how I'm not going all the way through the orange there. I'm just very lightly staying close to that, uh, that line. And then finally I'm coming in and blurring out that outer edge. So go all the way around and do that and you'll start to see that we'll get this nice area right in here that will stay nice and light. You're eventually going to come back in with that white and start to get a really beautiful highlight that will start to glow and make the piece come alive which is so exciting. So go ahead do your shading and I'll see you soon. All right, so we've had a chance to go all the way around, but I haven't added the white to most of it. You can see that I added the white right here when we spoke last, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into these places where I have the lightness and start to bring that highlight in here and just start to watch what happens to the piece when I start to bring the white right over that yellow. It starts to really glow and catch fire, which is just gorgeous. So I'm just going around and I'm giving pretty good tension to that pencil. I'm, I'm pressing a little bit harder with that white. I'm not going too, too lightly here. So I'm getting in there and starting to blend things up, starting to get a really nice tension there. You can see that I'm just moving around the piece. I'm just turning the tile. Okay, so you can see that I've had a chance to go all the way around and finish. I'm going to go back to that blue that we had early on in the piece here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into the outside edges of the Ani, uh, Ani flower here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just lightly start to shade in with that blue. And you can see that I'm just giving it a very, very soft kind of go round. I'm not really going with a lot of intensity on that pencil. And I'm only going to do about half of this for the video and you can do the other half on your own. So I'm coming in and I've got that nicely done. Now what I'm going to do is at the very, very bottom, I'm going to give this a little bit of depth here. So I'm giving a little bit of a pressure on the pencil and into these little valleys here. I'm just going to add a little bit of depth. And then once I've got that, 
I'm going to go back and grab that white again. So I've got that white, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to bring it right onto the outer edges just to give it that really soft pastel-y glow again. And that just gives such a beautiful aura to that Celtic knot flower that we've got in the center. So you can see that just by doing that much really makes it pop. Look at how electric that is. It's so beautiful. I just love that color. So go ahead, go all the way around and finish that up and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so we're gonna to start to build off this just a little bit more here. So I'm gonna turn my tile and I'm gonna to start to work in these areas right in here. So we're gonna to start to work with that wand W or wand W. And I'm going to take that color from the Ani flower and I'm going to bring it up in here. So I'm going to start with the yellow first and you can see that I'm just going to lightly lay down that yellow and just saturate those little bubbles. Now notice that I am not putting the yellow inside of the diamonds. I'm leaving that alone. So I'm just getting in there, adding in some of that yellow just into the bubbles themselves, but not into the diamonds. And then I'm gonna switch colors. I'm gonna go into that darker orange um, and just start to bring in some shading. Now you'll notice I don't have to press hard in order to get what I'm looking for here. So I've got this really nice soft kind of orange that's coming in almost as if it's like a blush on the bubble. So you can see I'm just going through on each side going about halfway up on each side and notice that I'm leaving the top nice and light here. And that's gonna make for a really interesting shading with the white when we get up there. So I'm just getting up there with the orange and putting that in and almost looks like a little flame in here, which is kind of neat. So I'm just getting in there and adding that in. Now, as we saw earlier on in this piece, I needed a little bit of that red to give me the punch that I was looking for. So I'm gonna come back in with that red and once again, very softly, because I know that I already have enough of that pigment in there. So I'm just lightly laying down that dark red. I don't have to push hard. If I push hard, it's gonna be a really strong line of demarcation, and then it's gonna look a little bit disjointed. So we really want it to have a nice flow to it. I'm just getting in here and bringing that all the way up, but coming up about halfway into that orange. So it really does have that kind of blush of red and orange in there. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this guy too on the side. Now I'm going to get that white and let's make this nice and large for you so that you can really see what's going on. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm really going to get in there and start to add that highlight in there. And you can see how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm just starting to get in there and give it a little bit of a punch, which is really nice. And look at how that really started to make that glow. So go ahead and do yours and I'll see you in a minute. For those of you who have just been going along with me, I'm just going to keep on rolling here, okay? So I'm going to take this color from the inside of my flower here, and I'm gonna bring that inside of the flame here or inside of the uh, Wand W. So I'm just going in very lightly with that blue, and I'm just starting to lay it down in there. And it's a really lovely contrast that we've got going on here. I really like the contrast. So I'll just get in there and add that in. And then I'm gonna come from the bottom and start to add a little bit of that darkness right at the bottom. I'm just getting in there with that. And then finally, I'll go ahead and I will grab the white and start to give that a little bit of a blend up. And you can see the pop that that gets right in the center of that tangle, so fun and cool. Isn't that neat? 
So you can see all the energy that that brings into the piece. Now you'll notice that up at the top, I kind of have this like, I guess you would consider it like a cornice or whatever. You could go with black in there or you could decide to take that blue and bring it up. And I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take it and bring it up. If you don't have that on your piece, that's fine not to worry. It doesn't have to be like mine. It can be like yours and that's even better. So there you have it. So that's one side. So just to give you an idea of where this is going. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that is so cool. All right, so we're gonna take that technique and we're doing it on the other side. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so I've had a chance to do both sides and I love the way this one is turning out. It's very psychedelic. <laughs> I don't normally get this kind of effect, but I'm really enjoying it. It's kind of fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to carry the color one more time. So you see this blue right here? We're going to carry that blue into the areas around our triangle here. So I'm going to go in and I'm just going to very lightly start to shade in with a little bit of that blue. And you can see that I'm just going in nice and light. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to give that a little bit of power or a little bit of heaviness right at the bottom. Get that nice dark blue going. And then once I've had a chance to get that nice dark blue going, I'll press a little bit harder just to see if I can get a little bit more depth out of it, which I can. And then I'm going to grab that white and get that really nice kind of soft smudgy feeling going in here and it's just so beautiful. So I'm going to go around and do that around each of my triangles and I'll see you in a minute. All right, so the next piece that we're going to do is we're going to start to come into the triangles here. So you can see I've got my triangles all the way around. And what I'm going to do is I'm I've got a really nice gray in my hands. If you have a graphite pencil, you can work with a graphite pencil. Um, I work with a gray color pencil just because I'm left-handed and I end up wearing everything on the side of my hand. Graphite just rubs off and I, that's why I'm not a big fan of it. So you might try using a gray pencil. One of my favorite gray pencils is from Prisma and uh, the pencil is the 70% gray and I'm just going to hold this up so that hopefully you can see it. Um, I love this color. I just think it's such a great color and it works so well for shading. It's just one of my favorites. So I'm just going to come in and I'm very, very lightly going to start to shade up the side of my triangle here. So you can see that I'm just very lightly going in and shading up the side. And once I have that, I'm going to come back down towards the bottom and give that a little bit more pressure so that I get a little bit of a darker edge right at the bottom. And then once I've had a chance to do that, I'm going to go ahead and grab that white pencil again and very, very uh, mildly go ahead and fill in the tips of the triangle with a little bit of that light and it really pops off and gives kind of this steely kind of color, almost metallic looking, which I love. So we're going to go around to each of our triangles and do just that. I'll see you in a minute. All right, so I have had a chance to do the triangles and I love the way that they're looking. And it's also giving a little bit more glow to that circle. Not that it needed more of it, but it just did. So one of the things that I want to talk about are our bands that are right in between the triangles here. And, you know, the first time I did it, I did it with dark uh, bands. And then today in class, I taught it with white bands, which I thought was really pretty too. But I'm feeling like this particular piece, it's got a lot of movement going on in it and it might need to have a little bit more black going on. So I'm actually going to grab for my puddling pen and 
I'm just gonna go through and work with the bands here. So I've got this piece here and you can see that I'm just going in and starting to puddle into those places. Now, if you don't have a good puddle pen, you can just use your O1 for this. But if you have a nice puddle pen like your, um, your Micron brush pen, that's a really fabulous pen to work with. Or some of you um, have taken my classes and I've become very uh, smitten with the Faber Castell pit pen. Uh, that's a great pen to puddle with. I also like the Tombow brush pen, the double headed one, the dual one. Um, that's a great one. So we're going to go through and we're going to puddle in throughout all of those pieces and you'll see that that will start to give this some gravity. So I'm going with black this time, uh, but you can choose whichever color you want. If you want to do white, do white. If not, maybe you choose a different color. All right, I'll see you in a minute. Boy, are we getting close, aren't we? We have really gone on a journey with this one. All right, so I have pulled out my Signo Uniball pen. This is the white pen, and I refer to this as the Cranky Pants pen just because it is uh, a pen that can be a little cantankerous to work with. Have a little piece of paper nearby that is a brownish color so that you can um, see if this pen is working. You can always flip over your tile if you need to and just get it going that way. I find that you know if people tap with this pen that doesn't work you need to kind of do a little curly cue to get it started some people like to draw on their hand to get this pen to work I've seen people just kind of go like this and get it to work that's fine too if that's what works for you it comes pretty much right off since it's just acrylic so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by putting my piece in the middle and we're gonna start to add some light into the piece here and I'm gonna start right in the center um, of the piece and I'm just gonna go right in here and add a little bit of light right down my bales flower so you can see that I'm just gonna turn the piece and add a little bit of light into bales and you can already tell that that's starting to bring out quite a bit of the interest of the piece so if you want to stop me here you can stop me here and catch up Otherwise, I'm just going to keep on rolling. I'm going to go into these guys right here. So I'm just going to come out and do a couple of dots out here. Really get it nice and juicy. Same thing over here. If you want to pause me, this is a great place to pause. Otherwise, I'm going to start to move outward into our little purple triangles here and I'm going to add some white dots into the triangles. And then finally I'm going to start to work up into the Ani flower. So here I go, I'm right here and I'm going to add a couple of dots right behind it and you'll see I'm just going to continue to turn the tile. So I'm just going and turning going and turning and doesn't that just a couple of lines and dots can make such an interesting impact on the piece I'm always amazed at how much just a little bit can do to bring a piece into fruition so I'm just working it in a nice circular motion now I'm gonna come out here into the black here I can see that there's a little bit of stuff on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to add a little bit of white into my my little triangles here. Just turning my tile and working with it. Hopefully not falling off camera. That happens. So just look at how different that is from when we first started. Now, if you want to, what you could do is you could come in here where these little blank guys are and you could add the white into here and watch what happens. It brings so much energy into the piece here. Either that or you could choose a different color. It's really up to you. But look at how neat that is. Isn't that so pretty? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the piece and I'm going to start to work up in here. 
So I'll come in and I'll start to work inside of the uh, the wand, uh, wand, wand woo or wand w. And I'm just adding a little bit of dots right into the blue. And then once I've done that, I'm going to start to work a little bit inside of the orange here by just giving a little bit of that. You can hear my husband in the background talking to our dog. <laughs> He's a cutie. So you can see that I'm just kind of working my way through. And that's just adding so much to the piece. I just love what's going on there. So I'm going to flip it and do the other side. Same thing. We really did save the best for last, didn't we? I really love this part. This part always gets to me when I, when I see it with the white. It's like all the hard work just paid off with just all the fun that you get to have with your white pen. And this happens to be a particularly good white pen today. Usually I have to stop and start quite a bit. So I'm just going over and going over. So there you have that. Isn't that so cool how that brought that all together? So the last part here, we're going to start to work in the blue a little bit. So I'll come in and I want to be very mindful not to smudge because, oh my goodness, that would be so sad if we did. So I'm just going to come in here and add a little bit. Maybe I spoke too soon with that pen. And just add a little bit of white in here. And I'll come over here. I'm being very, very careful at this point because I really don't want to smudge it. Coming down over here. And then I'll flip it and do it again. Being very mindful of where my hand is. There you have it. And giving that a little bit of sparkle, which is really nice. Gives it a lot of energy, which I love. So what I want to talk about here is I want to talk about the circle. And by the way, if you need to pause me here, this is a great place to pause me. I'm just kind of going through and showing you where you can add the highlights to the piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my um, my little neon circle here and I'm going to add a little bit to it. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and get that pen to go and I'm going to do a nice line coming right through here. And then I'm going to add a couple of dots. Same thing over here. And then I'm going to flip my tile and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'll come in. And do the same thing right over here. Go ahead, finish up and I'll see you soon. So here we are. We are done. We have finished the piece. And doesn't that feel good? That odyssey of creating on the fun Maryland tile and creating these really fabulous tangles. You know, one of the things that I talk about a lot in my classes are coming back and doing a piece over and over again and trying it in different ways. And as you can see, you know, changing your palette can really be a fun adventure, especially with the same composition. You know, you can play with it and change it, or you can uh, keep it the same. It will always have a different feeling to it. So I always want to encourage that. Well, I hope you've had a great time and enjoyed what you have created. And uh, if you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up or a nice review 
uh, on the Tangled Yogi 333 YouTube page. You can also join us at the Tangled Yogi Art Community page on Facebook. We would love to have you share your work there. I would love to be able to communicate with you and see what you're creating. That's always a nice thing. And if you're interested in the Maryland tiles, you can always go to tangledyogi.com and pick up some Maryland tiles and support your local Zen Tangle teacher or your, I guess, your cyber Zen Tangle teacher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there it is. I'm Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi, and I'm looking forward to seeing you sometime soon. Bye for now.